Hi, Marta. How are you? I am fine, thanks. How about you? Same as always. Thank you. Then let's not waste time and tell our listeners about the latest news. We speak slowly and use simple words so that you, our dear friends, can easily understand what we are talking about. More you listen to our podcast, more you understand. More you understand, more you learn English. Let's start. And our first news. Texas synagogue hostage taker was British. A man who took four hostages... One a second, can you tell me who is hostages? A hostage is a person seized or held as security for the fulfillment of a condition. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Back to our news. A man took four hostages at a synagogue in a suburb of Dallas, Texas, has been identified by the FBI as British citizen Malik Faisal Akram, 44. The man who interrupted a morning service in Colleyville on Saturday was shot and killed after a 10-hour standoff with police. And what is standoff? A standoff is a situation in which neither of two opposing groups or forces will make a move until the other one does. So nothing can happen until one of them does something. I appreciate your help, thanks. All of the hostages at the congregation Beth Israel were freed unharmed. British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss described it as an act of terrorism and anti-Semitism, adding, we stand with the US in defending the rights and freedoms of our citizens against those who spread hate. A brother of Malik Faisal Akram issued a statement apologizing to the victims and saying he had been suffering from mental health issues. The attacker gained initial access to the synagogue during the service by claiming to be a homeless man. Negotiators had spent hours talking to the assailant during the standoff. The rabbi of the synagogue, Charlie Kytron Walker, thanked everyone who helped to save the hostages. I am grateful that we made it out, he said on Facebook. I am grateful to be alive. I have no comments for this news. It's all terrible. And our next news is that tennis star Novak Djokovic deported from Australia after losing final visa battle. Finally, this case was solved. News about Djokovic were the only news that I was receiving the past two weeks. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Judges rejected a challenge by the unvaccinated tennis star after the government cancelled his visa on health and good order grounds. Djokovic said he was extremely disappointed, but accepted the ruling. He has left on a flight to Dubai. It marks the end of a 10-day saga in which the Serb fought to stay to defend his title in the Australian Open. Djokovic's supporters fell silent outside the courtroom as the decision was announced on the eve of what would have so, been... Excuse me, I interrupt you. What is eve? The eve of a particular event or occasion is the day before it or the period of time just before it. For example... For example, Christmas Eve is December 24. New Year Eve is the day before New Year. It's yeah. uh, 30, December 31. Back to our news. Djokovic's supporters fell silent outside the courtroom as the decision was announced on the eve what would have been his opening match in the tournament. One fan told the BBC her summer would be empty without the 34-year-old playing at the Open. 
Come on. I'm sorry for her, but what I can say? I apologize dearly. Supporters of Serbian tennis player Novak Djokovic listen to the court hearing at the offices of his legal team that will decide whether or not he can stay in Australia and defend his open title in Melbourne, Australia, January 16th, 2022. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison welcomed the decision to keep our borders strong and keep Australians safe. But his government faces criticism at home and abroad for its handling of the affair. I think that Australian authorities weren't right in this case. I think that they were right. For people who make decisions, there is a golden rule. If you don't know how to act, act according to the law. In this situation, as I understand it, Djokovic was formally right. And the first time the court confirmed this. But the Australian authorities decided to insist on their own and the court made a decision that satisfies the desire of authorities. To me, it seems wrong. I don't think so. We are in a global pandemic, so authorities have to do what they have to do to protect the public. If this is the way to keep Australians safe, then so be it, especially when it's a person who is unvaccinated. He knew when he got on the flight to Australia that he was unvaccinated and that they mandated vaccination. He is the only one at fault here. But he behaved according to the existing rules. He didn't break rules. He, he did, though. It mandates vaccination. What can I say? The authorities... At the end of the day, they're the ones who decide the final say. Even if the court found him guilty, guilty, then he goes home or to Dubai, apparently. Okay, we stayed too long on this yes. news. Let's go on to the next news. A winter storm is bringing heavy snow and ice to parts of the US and Canada, with millions under weather warnings. Uh, stop for a second. I know phrase under weather. If you say that you are under the weather, it means that you feel slightly ill. When we say with millions under weather warnings, so these millions are ill? Slightly, but ill? <laughs> um, no, here you just didn't read it uh, to the end. So with millions under weather warnings, a weather warning is for extreme weather. So it's a kind of warning that some people shouldn't be going outside or should be careful. So here what it is saying is that there are so many people who are under, under a warning for extreme weather, a weather warning. So it's not connected with sickness or not illness? Not at all. Okay, thank you. Thousands of flights have been cancelled, and power cuts have been reported in some southeastern states. Virginia, Georgia, and North and South Carolina declared states of emergency. The U.S. National Weather Service said the storm would hit much of the eastern third of the country over the next two days, with more than one feet or 30 centimeters of snow expected in some areas. Snow and ice could result in dangerous travel, power outages, and tree damage. There were also forecasts of possible coastal flooding in some areas, including New York City and parts of Connecticut, with warnings that roads and infrastructure could be affected. And again, welcome to global warming? It's not global warming, it's climate change. 
please don't be so mad. I just I just don't like when people always talking about global warming. Nobody talks about global warming anymore. If you go on any news outlet, if you look on any headlines, you will notice that it says climate change rather than global warming. On to our next news. Okay. Also very important, McDonald's does not have enough potatoes. <laughs> McDonald's does not have enough potatoes. Do you think it's small news? It's problem for a thousand people, I'm sure. Let's I'm sure it's a matter of life and death. The fast food company McDonald's is running out of potatoes in Japan. So the company decided to sell only small portion of its fries. McDonald's will not sell the medium or large portions of fries for about one month. The reason is that the company brings potatoes from Canada. In recent weeks, the weather was bad in lots of parts of Canada. There were heavy snowstorms as well as floods. McDonald's already had problems with potatoes in December with almost all 2,900 restaurants in Japan. This time, there were problems because of the weather in Canada and problems at sea. The company said it would give a discount on its menus and it would not sell the evening menu with fries and chicken nuggets until the situation was better again. Many things in this news very strange for me. First of all, December and January is not the time when they produce potato, especially in Canada. Canada, of all places. Normally they harvest at August and September. Sometimes in Canada, I don't know, I'm not a potato farmer, neither are you. Maybe it's more problem we see, but I don't understand what it's like. The whole month there are storms on the sea and they can't transportate the potato over the sea. They can use flight, for example, because it's very important. Japanese suffer without medium and large portion of fries. Once it's, again, it's, the it's unacceptable. <laughs> Once again, the problem is climate change, except that now people are only realizing it because they don't get their potatoes because of bad weather, not because they care about the planet, which I think is absolutely hilarious. And I'm happy that at least they stop blame global warming. It's not oh, okay. Fine. No, no, they stop blame, and I'm happy that they started they to use. They stopped blaming it years ago. How many? Like Two? five. No, no. So okay. <sighs> so this is it for today. Yes, this episode has come to an end. We will be happy if you press the button like under this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Also, you can ask questions and write comments under each episode. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.